Hey YouTubers, this is Russ Bucket from Apanger Alley. Just wanted to share with you a project that I just got done working on. Um, it's a waste oil furnace. Um, it's the first time doing this type of project. Um, and it's it was quite the quite the project. Uh, learned some things the hard way, what to do, what not to do. Just wanted to share my experiences with you guys. Um, share what I've done wrong, what I've learned, and some of the things that uh, I have uh, succeeded on. So, so just give you a quick rundown. Um, this is an old Rheen uh, fuel oil furnace that I converted over to waste oil. Um, basically how I have everything set up is I got the oil coming in from a great big tank outside, um, which isn't connected right now because I got antifreeze in my oil, so I gotta get that cleaned out. But nevertheless, um, basically I built this auxiliary tank on the outside of the furnace um, out of an am ammo can. So basically the oil comes in through a Y screen and it's uh, 60 mesh and uh, comes in through this float valve um, that shuts off at a certain level. And then uh, down below the float, um, you have a water heater element in there to preheat the oil using a controller and solid state relay. This is uh, Celsius, of course, but I preheat the oil to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, from there, uh, the oil comes through this tube into the pump. One thing I will say that I kind of picked up in some other videos is to make sure and put that outlet higher than your heating element so if something goes wrong and the furnace drains your auxiliary tank, you're not burning out your heating element. Uh, another thing that I found that works very well is the thermocouple. I just happened to pipe in um, where my oil is being circulated in from the pump. And that just uh, works really well to give the controller a good solid temperature of what uh, the tank is running when it's running real steady. So anyway, the oil comes in uh, into the pump and then from the pump, and this is one of the things that took a while to figure out because I'm using a siphon nozzle and uh, I'm not going to name any names, but some of the well-known guys that sell some of these components uh, kind of scolded me a little bit for trying to use the pump with the siphon nozzle. Uh, took me a little bit to figure it out, but I tell you what, now that I got it running real good, I would take this over a pressurized system over a siphon nozzle, gravity fed, whatever, any day. Uh, works way better and way more consistent. So basically the oil's coming into the pump, getting sucked in there, and the output side, there's a T. One side of the T goes up to a valve, which in turn goes to the nozzle. And you can control how much fuel is getting sucked into there. The other side of the T goes back to the tank and keeps the oil in circulation. Um, your siphon nozzle is also fed by air through a regulator. And I've got a solenoid valve hooked in there so that when the furnace shuts off, the air shuts off as well, just to help conserve the air. Um, you know, I got a great big air compressor over there, and uh, it really doesn't go through much air at all. That air compressor maybe cycles once a day. Um, and then uh, the controller, uh, another controller here, that goes to the nozzle itself and I run that about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I'm using the original Honeywell safety device on here. It's connected to a CAD cell that looks for the flame. I would definitely suggest using that. Definitely a good safety feature to keep. Uh, one thing that I like about this setup too is I kept the ability to use the uh, air regulation for the fan. Um, these other guys are blocking this completely off and I like the fact that 
I was able to not do that with mine um, because I found that experimenting with this thing, you can use that um, air regulation to kind of blast your ignition arc more into the fuel cone to help it uh, ignite better. Um, obviously, having your ignition set up properly is kind of key, but it's nice to have the ability to kind of play around with that arc using the uh, air regulation a little bit. So that's definitely another thing I would suggest doing. Um, I did use the original uh, rain controller for the fan. Um, had to play around with it a little bit. The spring was kind of screwed up in it, but now it's working just fine. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, it. Uh, ever since I finally got everything working right and dialed in, it uh, it works very well. Um, and very consistent um, so yeah um, if you have any other questions about anything feel free to reach out and um, you know it uh, another thing that kind of takes a little bit of time is getting the mixture right um, that takes some playing around with it but a good key that you're uh, getting close is when there's no smoke um, and not much smell. Um, I'm actually impressed with how not smelly um, waste oil burns. Uh, fuel oil is kind of nasty stuff and stinks and this seems to be a lot, burns a lot cleaner. Um, so, but uh, yeah, um, I think the other biggest key to running these things is having good, clean, consistent oil. That's about all I got. Um, if I think of anything else, I'll make another video, but uh, feel free to subscribe and, and uh, stay safe out there when you're playing around with these projects. Take care.